Hey guys, welcome back. Today I have a fun little prompt for us to unpack and by us I mean me. I do these every once in a while where I will dissect a hot topic and kind of just go over the points that might come from both sides and then dissect it and then give my opinion about it. This one's going to be a little different because I already have a an opinion about it before I even did research. For example, the last one that I did, it was, I think, does college make you more successful? And I wasn't really sure, and I still am not, because it's kind of like the, it could or it can't, doesn't really matter, it does. But this one, I just can't really see the other side of it. You know, like, usually I like to think with, like, Almost every scenario, I can understand both point of views. But this one I'm not entirely sure of because it involves celebrity privacy and something that like (laughs) just shouldn't be up for debate, honestly. But I don't know who I was talking to. But it got brought up and I was like, well, yeah, they do. And the other argument is that like, well, they're actively choosing to be famous. Now, before I even like jump into it, there's a couple points I need to get across here. I have had a large Panera (laughs) um, supercharged uh, lemonade. And my heart's beating out of my chest right now. I'm out of breath sitting down. My heart is racing so fast that my body thinks it's working out. And so I'm out of breath. And I will drink a coffee after this. I'm kind of just testing my limits. So we'll see how that goes. So in college, I explored this topic in a media law and ethics class because I got a degree in journalism So we kind of had to obviously learn the the laws behind what you can cover, what's legal, what's defamation, libel, all the things like that. Um, So knowing all of that, if we do choose like the actual journalist route, we know what the fuck we're doing. Whenever I was in this class, it was... During the height of the Free Britney movement, when Britney Spears was in her conservatorship, and we ta- I did a whole project on it. The reason that's related is because it had to do with her personal life and what was going on behind her career. And, um, and prior to this conservatorship, when she was younger, um, kind of at the height of her career and the downfall, if you want to call it that, she was just under incredible scrutiny from the media and is one of the prime examples of how media and the press can like push you past your breaking point. First, I want to open up with some pros and cons of being famous. As someone who has never experienced and hopes to never experience fame, and I actually don't know what the pros and cons cons are but this is just my outside point of view I actually have no idea and I don't think I ever want to know but we're gonna uncover them anyways this is what I imagine the pros and cons of being famous is like god my heart's fucking racing dude this is insane we'll go with the pros first and then the cons because I feel like there's you know the cons are more valid than the pros maybe some would argue I'm arguing that the pros are not as significant as the cons pros You have a fan base of people who love and admire you. It's like you have a bunch of friends. You also have more opportunities for like traveling and meeting people, events, networking, those kinds of things. Like if you're famous, you probably have a better chance of meeting other celebrities. You know, like like the likelihood I have of meeting Timothy Chalamet is not nearly as high as if I, you know, had... 3 million followers on Instagram or something like that, you know? Um, Not impossible for me to meet him now, but very unlikely because I'm just not put in those 
scenarios right now where he is located. And then another pro of being famous, you have just inherently more money in the comfort that comes with not needing to worry about money and financial issues. Um, And like I said, you have a higher chance of meeting your favorite celebrities. Um, The first thing that comes to mind is Brittany Broski and how she used to just like be, I mean, she is still normal. Well, (laughs) but like she used to just work at a corporate job and then all of a sudden she's like meeting Harry Styles and all of her favorite artists and celebrities. So that's just an example of that. Um, And then another quick one, you can use your platform to promote something important to you and use that like platform that you have, um, like Black Lives Matter, LGBTQ, women's rights, things like that. Now into the cons. So you're exposed to basically the entire world. I mean, technically I am right now because anyone could access this podcast or the Instagram and they can just comment whatever they want. Like, that's the right that people have and while it's you know that that's fair um it what's not fair is I guess I don't know I mean fuck it the world isn't fair but it does suck whenever someone tells you to kill yourself on a dm so yeah being famous you're exposed to basically the entire world which results in haters Um, you're under constant pressure and expectations from society, which I couldn't imagine doing. Like you're expected to be a good role model and you can't make mistakes because if you do, then you're a bad role model and that makes you a bad person. And you might as well just like your career's over. Also cancel culture. Fuck that. Uh Uh-uh. I don't want anywhere near that. People comment about you, even though they might not know you or the whole story. Um, next Like I said, they can uh, just say whatever they want. And then to segue, you have paparazzi, stalkers, creeps. Generally, your safety is more at risk. Yes, you can hire security, but sometimes it's like not completely necessary or it's just not in the budget. Like if you're more of like, like if you're not Beyonce or Taylor Swift or um, Harry Styles or like one of these like really big celebrities, if you're like... I don't know. Like, I don't think Emma Roberts is having her, like, a security guard with her. At least I don't think. So, it's kind of just, like, it depends. But generally, I feel your safety is heightened. Like, people find out where you live. And, like, if you don't live in, like, a gated community, then you're, like, fucked. And it's just you're more likely to be stalked. And that doesn't sound like a fun time. So, now that we've um, dissected the pros and cons of being famous, I want to give my short answer. My, my answer to do celebrities deserve privacy. My answer is yes, before we get into it. Because you're going to quickly be able to tell that my answer is yes by the points that I'm making. But I need you to hear me out if you disagree. I need you to listen to the research that I've done and the examples that I have provided before you shut off this episode. So like I said, I like to see both sides of every argument, but this, I'm not entirely sure. I, I really don't know. Here's the thing. And I'm going to get into this deeper, but like, no, we're going to, we'll talk about that later, but I like kind of can, but I like mainly can't see the other side of this argument like the no they don't deserve privacy huh what huh so prior to social media we had we still had magazines and newspapers if you didn't know that knock knock um as a media source to read gossip and news and updates it was just slower paced and not as widespread and not as like quick like something happens it's on twitter in 0.5 milliseconds but mm, circa pre-2008 maybe or something like that I don't know I don't know the exact year but prior to that everything you were getting all the juicy gossip from magazines um examples People Magazine, Us, Tiger Beat, TMZ, Perez Hilton, M, 
J14, Star, those kind of magazines that literally just dedicate their entire business to creating rumors and drama and reporting on it and essentially like digging into the lives of celebrities who are just trying to be alive. The difference between that kind of drama reporting versus now with like the T channels on YouTube and um, Twitter, any social media platform essentially, um, whenever it was just magazines or sometimes like entertainment news, you can't comment on that. So you're not like as a celebrity, you're not getting those comments. You're not seeing those comments. It's kind of just like a fuck like people are reading this magazine but you don't necessarily know what they're saying because at this time social media hadn't wasn't really popular yet so or didn't even exist so that's kind of the main difference is before people couldn't hate comment essentially now does that belittle the the invasion of privacy that these magazines kind of dove into no but it is just kind of the stark difference um, where I'm reading a I'm reading a Teen Beat magazine about Taylor Lautner and Taylor Swift breaking up. I'm going to be like, damn, is this true? Or whenever I was that age, I was probably just like, oh, my God, this is the worst day of my life. But you know what I mean? I can't like comment on that magazine and be like, I don't know, whatever the fuck. You guys know what I mean. And this is the point that I was trying to make earlier. The other side that I kind of mean is I get it with the whole reporting on breakups and divorces and like he said she said all this stuff I get it I literally have a degree in knowing how to do that and how to make a juicy story but I also have morals so I'm thank god I'm not in like the journalism route I'm more like public relations But I just can't imagine getting a tip or something or like working for a place where my coworkers are taking these, you know, these quotes from, oh, a reliable source and just like writing a story about it just to write a story about it, just to get a view, like to just to have like a story. And I get it because that's your job. You're a journalist. You you write about things that are happening but at what extent is a story and when does it become invasive and damaging and hurtful um and I have plenty of examples now I think the reason why we commoners I will call us aka non-famous people um want to know so much about these A-list celebrities' lives is because we want to know what we don't know, you know? (laughs) Like, we want to know what it's like to be rich and famous. We want to know what's going on behind closed doors because if there's one thing about humans, it's that we are going to want to know everything. It's obviously, oh, not everyone, Lily. Okay, I fucking get it. Yeah, I know. Not everyone cares what Jennifer Aniston's doing in her private time. I get it. But believe you me, there are plenty of people on this planet who want to know everything that's going on in Olivia Rodrigo's life. Trust me. I'm, I'm on the internet chronically. I see what people are saying. So essentially people will do anything to access that private information because they want to know. And they want to have a story and they want something to talk about because they have nothing else better to do with their lives. So let's get into the couple examples that I brought to the court. Your Honor, I have brought forth plenty of examples of the media invading in a celebrity's private life. So let's begin. Number one, touched on this a little bit, but Britney Spears, her entire career essentially is an example of an invasion of privacy. Um, interviewers, I've seen so many, especially whenever I was doing this project, but people would just be interviewing her and the interviewers, I mean, they were like, are you a virgin? Who are you dating? 
uh, what kind of men do you like? Mm, so I heard you and so-and-so have gone on a date. Like, hang on. What happened to... So what was the process like of writing this song? Or, you know, what was your inspiration behind this album? What happened to talking about the work that she was creating? Because at the end of the day, that's why she has a career. Because she's making music. And this goes for, like, every other, essentially, female artist. Actually, every female artist. It's always, you know, it's always talking about the who's this about um the drama behind all of it but men it's kind of they're just held to a different standard but I won't get into that today yeah people wanted to know everything about Britney's private life and never wanted to focus on her music her career why she was being interviewed in the first place she's not sitting down with Diane Sawyer to talk about whether or not she lost her virginity she's supposed to be talking about the music that she's putting out into the world but that's not how people handled it why that's weird she was also like a kid whenever they're asking her these questions like people were just fucking freaks because they saw a young beautiful talented girl and wanted to know everything about her life and what she does besides music it's like we need to know who they are behind closed doors in order for us to judge their character and to determine how, if we'll accept them or not, or have you done drugs? Have you had sex? Are you dating someone? Are you single? Why are you single? Oh, you're dating someone? Didn't you just date someone five months ago? It's like these celebrities have to go through a, uh, the ringer, a pop quiz, just so the public can determine if you know, they're acceptable if we can listen to their music, if we can give them awards. It's like, why can't their music just be their music? Now, <laughs> something just popped into my noggin. You might be saying, if you know me well or have been a dedicated listener of this podcast, Lily, don't you hate John Mayer for what he did in his public life or in his private life? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm allowed to because he... <laughs> Because he dated a 19-year-old when he was 32. And I feel like that warrants a little bit of, of hate. Because that that's sick. Okay? That's illegal. It's not. But borderline illegal. Anyways, getting back to Britney. That's kind of the main point there. Um, uh, excuse me. I need to stop drinking this fucking charged lemonade like fucking gasoline for my heart whenever her and justin timberley broke up all the media obviously pinned on her and was like why did you oh you broke his heart um you know what did you do how could you do this to him we didn't know the story but it was just immediately everyone's placing justin timberlake on this high pedestal and it's like we worship this man in the industry and you're going to go and break up with him. It had to have been your fault because he's perfect. That is literally the case for so many women. Not even just in the music industry, but just in general. And I'm going to get into that. Actually, you know what? Sec oh, wait, no, I still, have to, I still have a couple other things. So kind of how I was mentioning earlier, the quote unquote downfall of Britney Spears, when she shaved her head and she like, everyone kept saying she's not fit to be a mother and this and that. You ever sit back and wonder why she got to that point? Probably because every media outlet was questioning her and digging into her life and stalking her and the paparazzi were always in her face example a she she was having a bad day and she was like you know what i'm gonna go shave all my hair off fair i've thought about it but since she's a celebrity it's like world news but if i did it it's fine well it might not be fine you know my family and friends might be a little concerned but you know what i mean so in 2007 
Brittany had an umbrella in her hand and there was a swarm of paparazzi men um, surrounding her, taking pictures of her. And she got pissed, obviously. She's like, leave me alone. For the love of Christ, go like get a real job that isn't harassing me. And they obviously didn't oblige. And she took an umbrella and started smashing a paparazzi's car with the umbrella. Honestly, I can't even blame her, to be honest. But back then, and even probably still now, even though it's probably gotten a little bit better, um, like back then, no one stood back and was like, hmm, maybe we should like approach this with a little bit more care and empathy. Like she's young and she's been under like the light since she was very young. And maybe we need to look at this in a more concerning way and make this a good point to like raise awareness for mental health. No, that wasn't a thing. Like, oh, maybe this scrutiny that we are constantly putting her under, maybe we need to reevaluate. No, not once did that go through anyone's minds, specifically fucking TMZ. So basically, the reason I brought that up is because there's no reason why we need to have paparazzi. Why why do six random men with giant cameras need to be f- photographing Taylor Swift walking from her apartment door into a car? Or from a restaurant door into a car? Now, I know that there are some celebrities, so maybe C, B list celebrities, who will call the paparazzi just so they can get those photos out. It's kind of a PR move to kind of, you know, remind the internet that they exist, essentially. But a lot of the time, like, the paparazzi are unwarranted. Like, the celebrities don't want it. I just could not imagine if I walked out of my door and there were just six men waiting for me. I'd never leave my house. What do you mean? That's literally, get away. Get away from me. It's insane. And that doesn't even touch on, like, the point of stalkers and, like, random people trying to break into my house. That is literally, like, even just a stalker... Like, if I had a stalker as just, you know, I'm a commoner. Like, that's scary in of itself. But when you have the security and you have the gates and you have the cameras and someone still gets close to you, it's like, at what point? Like, where, where is the line drawn? Because it's like how 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 much more can they do it's just people are fucking insane trying to get into their lives like they're just trying to like make pasta and there are people climbing their walls it's insane (laughs) hey oh you know they're choosing to be famous that's the main argument I think on like the other side of this discussion is they're choosing to be famous okay how They're pursuing a career that they're passionate in that just happens to be watched by millions and listened to by millions of people. That's like, I mean, they have a talent. They have a skill. And if I had that talent or skill, hell yeah, I'm going to pursue it because there's a lot of money in it and it's something that I love to do. Like, hey, the dream is to do your hobby as your job and get paid a shit ton for it. Sounds like a dream to me. So yeah, I'm going to pursue it. But it's like they're being punished for wanting to pursue this career that they've always wanted to do. And so, and I know, and once again, I'm going to mention her. Taylor Swift has mentioned this plenty of times. She's like, I, I, I never want to complain about people waiting for me outside of my apartment and thousands of people knowing who I am or whatever. Because she's like, I've dreamt about this since I was a kid. And I have to remind myself, like, this is what I've wanted my entire life. Fair enough. 
but she's also just a great human being in general and it's sad that she has to say that because it's like yes she wants you know people to sing her songs back to her and she wants um you know to tell a story and to make music but why does it have to come with stalkers and paparazzi and scrutiny and hate and like invasive comments and conversations that don't like pertain to the people like saying these things I don't know dude next when people get a divorce in Hollywood or just like any celebrity it is literally on every single magazine cover within 24 hours same with whenever they get married it is like on people magazine the next day before the the two people even post it on instagram and i know that that's like okay they're sharing that with the world I had to do a quick outfit change because i'm sweating my nuts off because my heart's racing so fast right now from that fucking lemonade <sighs> whatever anyways where did i leave off here's the thing i understand where it's like okay they're willing they're they are actively putting that marriage on a cover they're doing an exclusive collaboration with people magazine or vogue or whatever they are signing up to plaster this wedding and give it to the entire world i get that and I do understand where it's like, okay, if you don't want people to talk about your private life and ask about it, like, don't put it out for the world. I get that. I do. Because it's like, once again, I'm going to mention Taylor Swift. She doesn't talk about her private life that much, specifically her romantic life, because she has learned in the past that when she does that, that's all people people are going to talk about. That's still what people talk about to this day, but it's not nearly as bad. I don't know, dude. I just, I think about like how hard it is to go through a divorce and not wanting people to know about it until you've kind of healed. And then the next morning you wake up and the entire world knows and it's still very fresh for you. And everyone's making comments about it. Example A. Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt's divorce. I don't know when this was. It, it was a little bit. Of, it was a while ago. But I did some research on the magazine news covers. And like what people were saying. And it was. Here are just a couple uh, cover headers from different magazines. Don't worry. Why Angelina tortures Brad. Her plot to destroy Brad. Why she left. What pushed Brad over the edge? Are we sensing a little misogyny, guys? I hope your answer was yes. Now, I get it. I can hear people literally saying, well, they're public with their marriage. So obviously they're like... Well, here's the thing. Whenever something good happens, you want to tell everyone, don't you? If you can hear that buzzing, no, you can't. Whenever you're excited about something, you want to share it. Getting married is exciting. So obviously you're going to be like, guys, look, I got married to the love of my life. This is the best day of my life. And then you get a divorce and it's like, fuck, I don't want anyone talking about this. I don't want anyone to know about this. I'm hurting. I don't want anyone commenting about this. I don't need anyone else's opinions. So obviously they're going to keep it to themselves because that's, they're choosing to not share that information. So if they're choosing to not share that information, we don't need to know about it. We can, we should only know the things that the celebrities are telling us. We, I don't need to know what's going on in everyone's personal lives if they don't want me to know it. Point blank period. So why is every single magazine cover and news outlet even to this day talking about stuff that these celebrities clearly aren't gonna comment on because they don't want us to fucking know about it like they deserve to have a little piece of their private life left when their entire 
career is being watched and listened by millions of people. Like that's not, let them have a little piece of their self left. I can't imagine my entire life and my entire family and friends just being plastered for the entire world to comment on. I would feel, I would have an identity crisis like you wouldn't even imagine. I, I feel like I would just lose myself. I wouldn't, I would feel like I'm kind of just this piece of th- this doll that people can play with. Like I wouldn't have myself in my privacy and my own thoughts and secrets. Like I wouldn't be able to trust anyone. Anyways. <laughs> um, and it's not like, the, it's like, oh, this, that was like, oh, 2000s, like, you know, it, the time was different, like, how whenever people, like, make jokes, and it's like, oh, you can't make those jokes anymore, like, you know, they made that joke whenever it was, like, tw- 2010, like, times are different now, but that's not how it is, people, like, news outlets and journalists are still doing the same shit that was going on in 2007 with Britney Spears, it's just switched a little bit, like, these drama and gossip magazines are still doing the same shit and now we have this new category of celebrities or famous people if you will influencers and they are like mini celebrities because they still have this same scrutiny that like Angelina Jolie is is under but it's just on a different scale because then you have the, you have just Twitter, social media, everyone commenting and making TikToks and whatnot. Um, and then you have those T channels where an anonymous person most of the time will m- make a 20 minute video providing the public information about drama that's going on in your life. I haven't had drama in my life in a while. But I do know something that if I'm already annoyed and stressed out about said drama, I don't need anyone else's opinion about it. I don't want anyone. I don't, you don't, the thing is, is that people don't know the entire story. So why would you even comment about it? You think you know the entire story, but you don't. It's like you've done all this research and you've done this and that and this is what's going on. You don't know the entire story, but people act like they do. And then that's when they give their opinion. It's unwarranted and it's unwanted and it's actually pretty damaging to the person you're talking about. So think before you speak. (laughs) Think. Next example. Infamously, the Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee sex tape that was stolen. (laughs) Okay, let's get into this. If you choose to make a little spicy video, you do run the risk of it being leaked. But this wasn't like a video on iCloud, dog. This was a physical tape, an OG DVD physical copy of a sex tape. So it wasn't like there's a data hack going on. Everyone delete your shit. No, this was meant to just be theirs. And some bastard came out and was like, hey, hey, I I got... I got this sex tape, uh, pay me so much money and interview me and I'll give you the tape. That is a classic 101 example of invading a celebrity's private life. That, what they decided to do with that tape, Tommy and Pamela, was their own business. (laughs) We didn't need to see that. But since us commoners have nothing else to do but to like talk about other people it's like holy shit like that person selling the sex tape knew what they were doing they knew um that it was going to be what everyone was talking about for probably years and people are like people the tommy and pamela um show came out on hulu i think and that just like once again, opened up a wound for probably Pamela herself because that is like whenever I was doing research on this, the fir- like on 
websites. It was like the Pamela Anderson sex tape. Not Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee sex tape. It was just the Pamela Anderson sex tape. There's two people involved in that sex tape. But it was just the woman that was being scrutinized for it. Because it's like there's this notion where, you know, a man has a very beautiful girlfriend or wife that's like, they like guys dab them up great catch dog like what are we a fucking fish what do you mean and so when this happened it was like oh, she should be ashamed of herself like what was she thinking blah, blah 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 hey what about tommy what about tommy lee <sighs> pisses me off so much and so the sex tape basically tainted her poor choice of words. It tainted her career for the rest of her life. Um, but you know what I mean. Someone took that tape, took it upon themselves to say, I know what this is going to do. It's going to ruin their lives and give me a little bit of fame. Because I'm going to be known as the person who stole the sex tape and shared it with the public. And I'm going to be known for that. You're insane. That person's actually insane. Oh, congratulations. You ruined someone's life. We're happy about that. And I know that there's more to the story in terms of like, it was because like he wanted revenge or whatever, but that's just crazy. Hey, hey, that's crazy. You're insane. I will say that with my chest. That person is insane. It needs psychological assistance. So obviously... They're going to take it to court and like for defamation and stealing of uh, private property and shit like that. But the courts literally said that it was an invasion of privacy because her celebrity status. Like they said she couldn't sue because there was the potential she used that tape as a means to sacrifice her privacy to promote herself. Huh? The courts literally said, hey, you can't sue because you can't sue this man who stole your private property of you being vulnerable and something that was meant to just be yours because there's the potential that you did it on purpose and you wanted that person to steal the sex tape and show it with the world just to promote yourself. I could not believe my eyes whenever I was reading that article. I couldn't believe my eyes. What? Oh, okay. Yeah. That's exactly what she wanted to do. Sure. I just couldn't, I just couldn't believe it. And if you believe that, if you believe that that's actually what she wanted to do, you're crazy. What? She wanted the entire world to see her gooch? <laughs> no. You know what? So what if she did? But if she, if she did want people to, like, if she did that to promote herself, why would she be suing? Why would she be so, like, why would she be making, why would she be suing and, like, publicly talk about how damaging it was for her mental health? That would just, I just, that's just not, that's point blank period misogyny at its core. And I'll say that one more time. That is misogyny at its core. Hmm. Next up, I also, once again, have to bring up Taylor Swift. Because this is just who I am. You, There's very rarely an episode where I don't mention her. So, obviously, she's a huge celebrity. We know this. I know this. You know this. And I mentioned before about how she like doesn't like to complain about it. But obviously, it gets a little weird and like people like a crowd of people waiting for her outside of her apartment to like just walk out of her door and go to her car and walk literally like five feet but whatever um not only just the paparazzi invading her privacy but also the quote-unquote fans the fans who clearly didn't watch miss americana um and don't know how scary it is for her um, having people just constantly like waiting outside of her houses like hey newsflash we live in America and gun laws are not very restrictive and 
Anyone can have a gun. Just saying. That's scary. Let's think about that. <laughs> Let's think about, you know, you are like, hmm, I want to go to the gym. Let me walk outside. Oh, there's 200 people waiting for me outside. Someone could have a gun. Someone could have a bomb. And then at one point, do bodyguards even help? It's insane. Now, for the quote unquote fans who I mentioned in part two of my Taylor Swift crash course, um, who like go to these restaurants that she's at or kind of an event and like swarm it just to like have a potential glimpse of her. I understand in terms of the parasocial relationship, they feel that, you know, they are friends with her because, you know, she is so kind to her fans and she tells like very personal stories throughout her music that is up for interpretation but she doesn't know one single thing about us she doesn't know who you are babe let that sink in she has no idea who you are and therefore you are not friends (laughs) because friends is like you talk to each other what you have is a parasocial relationship with taylor swift Now, I understand that I make jokes that I have a parasocial relationship with Taylor Swift. And I slightly do. But I'm also not going to stalk her. I'm not going to wait outside her apartment. Because I, one, have a brain. And two, know that that makes her a little scared. So why would I contribute to that? Just to see her walk five seconds outside? That's crazy. I have better things to do. I'll see the picture online. Which, of course, there's always going to be a paparazzi photo of it. They're going to do anything in their capacity. And she's also in the past, like, like been transported in a box just so she doesn't get her picture taken. Because, believe it or not, sometimes you don't want to get your picture taken. Sometimes you're having a bad day. You're having a bad hair day. You got a giant zit on your forehead. And you're like, I, you know what? I don't want the whole world to see what I look like right now. I kind of just want to go to the gym. I kind of just want to go to the studio. I kind of just want to, like, go see a friend. And not have the whole world see me and she shouldn't have to just go in a little box (laughs) she shouldn't have to travel in a suitcase literally just to do that but nonetheless the paparazzi and press and media make it impossible for a celebrity to have a private life because at the end of the day they're gonna think that it's their right to know everything and then you have the whole fucking conversation about celebrities as children and the paparazzi um not blurring out their faces because believe it or not um there are creeps in this world and the child also doesn't have any kind of say over whether or not they want their face plastered on the fucking website of tmz or buzzfeed like there's a reason why some celebrities don't post their kids because um maybe they want their kids to have a semi-decent normal life growing up example a Gigi hadid has never shown her face her child's face example b um blake lively and ryan reynolds i think like they're really big into talking about like child trafficking child sex trafficking and um really really tragic issues like that and are very outspoken about like the creepos that live on the internet um and so they are really big into like keeping that part of their life private um which is great because people are fucking weird but the thing is that um in the U.S. as I was doing research the U.S. has some pretty weird has a pretty weird standpoint on paparazzi photos because of the document that was written hundreds of years ago um in the first thing You have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, let me tell you something. I did an entire campaign in college on the First Amendment. In one of which, um, the, the freedoms listed in there is the right to press. Now, once again, I'll say it again. That amendment was written hundreds of years ago. When... The thought of, like, a cell phone was, like, a a digital picture wasn't even a thought. So whenever they say freedom of press, that kind of just meant, like, 
hey, you have the right to talk shit about the government and we won't stick you in a guillotine. So now in modern times, um, also just want to point out that the Constitution was supposed to be rewritten like every 10 years or something like that. I just want to point that out. So whenever people are like, hey, I wish you wouldn't like take pictures of my kid whenever I'm just pushing them in a stroller around Central Park or and then the arguments like, well, then don't take your kid out to (laughs) Central Park. So what we're telling celebrities what they can and can't do now? Oh, it's like, oh, you know better. How about we say that to the creepos out there and the paparazzi? You should know better. Now here comes the argument. The paparazzi have a right to document. That's their job. They have the freedom of press. And let's get into the legality of it. Um, There's a treaty created by the UN called the right of the child saying that children have the right to protect themselves when encountering illegal interference of privacy or attacks on reputation. Okay. So basically a kid has the right to protect themselves whenever someone is like, invading their privacy or um, defamation on their name and their reputation, whatever. Every country in the UN accepted and signed this treaty, except for the USA and Somalia. Because, oh, the First Amendment this, First Amendment that. What about child's safety? Sorry, I'm getting off topic. (sighs) God, that pisses me off. U.S. do better. Next example. Um, when Kobe Bryant and his daughter and the other passengers passed away in the helicopter crash. Kobe Bryant's family found out about that tragedy with the entire world. And there was so much misinformation going on because as soon as TMZ found out about it, they had to report it. They had no ethical value when reporting that tragedy i understand that yes they had to report that like a celebrity death is news in my eyes because it's like okay well they're no longer with us let's give them privacy people don't know what the fuck that is anyways the entire world was talking about this and like kobe bryant's wife had no idea the details because it was like publications were doing everything in their power to get any information and post about it whether or not the information was accurate and this is where the question of ethics versus number of views comes in where it's like do I publish this story because it's what's trending right now it's what's going on we need to get it out so people you know we can increase our website views or our number of profile visits or what have you but then it's it's like well what if like we don't have all of the details we don't know everything that happened so it's like are would you rather risk misinformation for number of views in this case yeah people did A, like even like well-respected publications had to come out and say you know, we're sorry we didn't have all the information. The article has now been updated with, like, all the correct information, police reports, things like that. Because everyone was so eager to report about it. And at the end of the day, I understand, once again, that it is their job to tell a story. But at what cost? How about we sit back for one fucking second and think about Kobe Bryant's wife and his other children? If I were sitting here and I was scrolling through Twitter dee, 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 and I saw trending my dad's name on Twitter, I'd be like, what the fuck is going on? Hey, I thought he was on like a little trip and I find out he fucking died in a helicopter crash. And and everyone was saying, oh, the, the, all the conspiracies start. That just adds to the trauma of it all. It's just insult to injury. It is literally just making it 10 times worse but it's oh the first amendment this first amendment that i don't know dude oh this this conversation just 
burns a fire in my fucking soul. Now, here's the counter argument. Like I said earlier, they're choosing to be famous and publicly known. Yes, correct. They are actively putting out music. Now, here's the thing. You can just put out music and that'd be it. But if you have a dream to, you know, play in stadiums and um, tell these stories that you're telling in your music and you want to see your fans and get that support and you want to make a career out of it, like, yeah, you're going to want to promote it and you're wa- you're going to want to build this brand. Like, I understand that, you know, Taylor Swift is choosing to share pictures of her cats or um, her and her friend. But it's like why how how does her posting a picture with her friend equal like paparazzi following everywhere she goes where how take me from one point to the other and explain to me how that warrants that conversation they're choosing to be famous yes but in that career that they're in they're choosing to write songs make music, um, act in a movie, put on this character. But everyone wants to talk about, you know, what's going on. Are they dating anyone? How are you doing after this breakup? Is she okay? Like, what's he doing? And blah, 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 blah. How about we just ask them about, you know, method acting or the process of writing this song or um, their vision for when they first got the script for this movie? What happened to those kinds of questions? I just couldn't imagine being an interviewer with this A-list celebrity. I couldn't imagine being with Margot Robbie interviewing her. And the first thing I fucking ask is, hey, so why don't you ever talk about your husband? I'm at the Barbie premiere and my first fucking instinct is to ask, so how come you never talk about your husband? Are you guys having marital issues? Huh? I'm not saying that's what someone did, but I am saying that that is something that has definitely occurred before in the history of time. 100%. God. Like signing a contract with Warner Bros. It's not... The contract is, you know, whatever the fuck a Warner Bros. contract entails. But it's probably... I, I can almost guarantee when you sign a contract to be in a movie, it's not let strangers on the street harass you and take pictures of you when you don't want your picture to be taken. That's not what you're, oh, that's what, oh, they're being famous. That's what they're signing up for. Why? So we're just excusing these crazy people's behavior for taking pictures of them on the street when they don't want to be, have their picture taken? Why are we just like letting that happen? Oh, freedom of press. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) Shut up. Shut up. What about the, the, the freedom of life, liberty, and happiness? They're not feeling too, too, they're not feeling a lot of liberty. They're not feeling too free. They're not feeling too happy when everyone's shoving a camera on their face. Oh, oh, do you want to speak on this? You want to speak on this? Oh, what happened? But how about you actually put the camera down and shove it up your tiny little butthole? You ever think about that? TMZ? Celebrities can choose information to share, to not share, but they have no control over what people say. So, for example, I'm famous. I tell my friend that me and my boyfriend broke up. I'm sad. I'm heartbroken. The next morning, I wake up, and every headline is about my breakup. I'm still hurting, and the media saying, what'd she do? He got tired of her. I didn't want that information to be put out into the world. But now everyone knows. Now, not only did I lose a friend, because that's the only friend I told, I also have to mourn the breakup of me and my boyfriend. They can't win. That's why I never want to be famous. I couldn't do it, dude. I could not be famous. Now, here's the thing. What classifies as news? Because it's like journalists and the media have the right to publish news. But where there's such a thin line between news and infringing on like someone's privacy and the press's freedom to gather news. So, for example, is Ariana Grande going to the grocery store news or an invasion of privacy? 
she's going in public, but it's also why are we documenting this? Taylor Swift getting dinner at, in New York at a restaurant with friends. Trending on Twitter. Why? Because she's going in a public area? Is that the only common denominator? Why is that news? I thought news would be like fucking... There's an earthquake. Or something like that. Like, yes, it's interesting to, to see her outfit or to like see her off the stage. But it's just like... That shouldn't be normal. Because she's famous for making music not going she's not a socialite going out to dinner and that's the only thing she's known for is Leonardo DiCaprio dating a new 24 year old news debatable because it's quite a um hot topic he's like fucking in his late 50s or something I don't know I did see though he is dating um or he was seen with a 25 year old so he's really pushing his limits though so good for him I don't know. Maybe the difference between invasion of privacy and news is the norm normalcy of it. I'm thinking like grocery shopping and grabbing a bite to eat isn't news. Yes, it's in the public and like anyone could see it. Blah blah blah. But I don't know. But like, what makes Leo having a new girlfriend news? Is it that she's 30 years younger than him? Maybe. But that's still his private life and has nothing to do with the movies that he's in and the acting. Is it fucking weird? That he's dating a 25-year-old? Absolutely. But like, and is it fun to make fun of him for dating gorgeous young model women? Yeah. I don't know. That's not a good example because I, I could sit here and analyze Leonardo DiCaprio's like affection towards women 30 years younger than him. But that's not today's discussion. Um... Or is this, at the end of the day, just another problem in America? Because I did a little digging, as I do, and I wanted to see what the other laws were like because, you know, we're the only country that has the Constitution, the, the Constitution of America, and the, the right to laugh, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, whatever, what, you, what have you. So I did a little digging, and... I wanted to see what the laws were like in other, you know, first world countries, developed countries, and their laws regarding paparazzi and invading um, the privacy of celebrities. France has a law prohibiting paparazzi taking photos of celebrities' uh, private life without their consent. If they do that, they have a fine of $32,000. That's why it's like you never really see pictures of celebrities when they're in France, except for like New York Fashion Week or <laughs> Paris Fashion Week or something. You know what I mean? Like that's different because that's like an event. That's like the Met Gala. Like you're going to get the picture taken of your outfit you're wearing and whatever. But if they're just like having a little bite to eat at a coffee shop, obviously <laughs> that's their private life. So, but the thing is, is that it's such a rarity to get that content of celebrities in New York so sometimes paparazzi will still take photos pay that fine because the profit that they get from selling those photos exceeds that $32,000 but we don't have that in America you could just take a fucking picture of anyone post it on the internet and be like oh Taylor Swift at a at a coffee shop in New York City go get her like I really think that a lot of it has to do with um, Americans, because once again, hopefully you're not sick of me yet. Taylor Swift was in Mexico recently for the Eras tour. That was her last stop she was in. And no photos surfaced of her in public. She was at a restaurant. She was in, like, the fans in Mexico knew what hotel she was staying in, but they didn't share it. They weren't taking pictures and, and hounding her hotel she was in or where her um, you know, crew workers were in or whatever. People knew what restaurant she was in, which she actually paid for the entire restaurant that that night that she was at that restaurant. She paid for everyone's meals. Everyone in the entire restaurant, might I add. Besides the point. No one 
took pictures of her. We only found out about what um, house she rented or what hotel she stayed in until after she left because that's not the culture in that in that area in in Mexico. They were like, we're not going to just give up her location. Why would we do that? But here, the second people find out where she is, it's everyone knows. Oh, God. People piss me off. This is getting me real fucking pissed. Um, in the UK, after the death of Princess Diana, where the original cause people thought of why they crashed was because of the paparazzi chase. Um, like, paparazzi were chasing them, and that's why they crashed, um, which ended up so-called the driver was under the influence and that's why they crashed i don't know the british government seems a little shady on that um they invoked a law right after finding out or before finding out about the the driver being drunk or on drugs or whatever um banning paparazzi from taking photos quote through continuous pursuit expanding the definition of private property strengthening the protection of celebrity children and preventing media collective harassment so basically, they invoked a law to protect celebrities' privacy. But we couldn't do that here because, God forbid, we go slightly against a law that was written hundreds of years ago before technology was even a fucking thought. Now that you've heard all my points and heard me ramble on and get a little heated up, do you think celebrities deserve privacy? Now, I might not have changed your mind, and that's fine. And you can argue with the wall about, oh, they des- they don't deserve privacy. They're choosing to be famous. That's fine. But I'm not going to sit here and agree with you. <laughs> because I just gave you very valid reasons. And you should agree with me. So, yeah. That's all I have for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for um, hearing me out. And if you want, you can follow the pod on Instagram at argue with the wall and give this podcast up five stars because I did so much research for this and I hope you appreciated it. I'll be really upset if you don't. And you can follow me on Spotify. You can follow whatever the fuck you want. I don't know. But I want you guys to, to take the rest of the day and think about this. And if you want, you can let me know. Maybe I'll put up a little poll on Spotify um, of yes or no. Do you think celebrities deserve privacy? Yes or no? So think about that. Ponder on it. Really think about it before you answer. And I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.